What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. So in a video about a year ago, I printed a 35mm film photo, mainly because I just wanted to see how a 35mm film photo would look as a print, how it would hold up, would I be happy with the result, how sharp it was, etc, etc. Long story short, it turned out great, actually a lot better than I thought it would, and it's gonna end up going on a gallery wall that we're currently sort of planning for our living room, which we're trying to do up at the minute. It's an absolute process, but we're getting there. But anyway, I wanted to do the same thing again, but this time for a 120 or medium format film photo. I have printed a couple of photos that I took with my Yashika mat, and it's just a nice process, but I didn't really explain how I done things, how I set the photos up, and I didn't really give my thoughts on the final photos too much either. So let's just cut to the chase. This is the photo that I wanted to print. It's a photo from our time in Alvera in Spain, up in the mountains, I used my Yashica mat and a roll of Porter 400. And here is that photo as a print. So to prepare my photo for printing, the first thing I do is bring the photo into Lightroom. I make sure to set my screen to 40% brightness because the print will always turn out much darker than you actually see it on a backlit monitor. And then just go ahead and edit everything else pretty much just as you normally would. I also add some sharpening in Lightroom and I make sure especially for film photos that the masking level is set quite high because you don't want to be sharpening green in the sky for example. So once I'm happy with the final photo in Lightroom, I then bring the photo into Photoshop to do the rest of the preparations. You don't necessarily have to use Photoshop, it's just the program I have and the program that I've sort of learned through different tutorials and stuff, so it works for me so far. Oh, and just one more thing before you bring the photo into Photoshop, make sure that you have your preferences in Lightroom set to the same as I have on screen at the minute. This is just to make sure you're editing your photos with the biggest file size and color space. Now that the photo is in Photoshop, the next thing I do is resize the image. So I just click on image and then image size, and you can then change the setting to inches or centimeters, depending on what you prefer working with. Personally, I like to choose inches. I wanted my print to be 10 inches by 10 inches. So I just entered that, and just something to keep an eye on is the image file size up here. My image size is now lower than the original file because I've made the image smaller, and that's fine. I can now up my DPI to 300, which is sort of the ideal DPI for printing. And by doing that, the image file size has increased, but it is still under the original file size, which is what you want. It's a little tricky to explain, but to keep it simple, you want to keep your image size the same as or under the original file size. This way Photoshop is not adding any information that wasn't originally there. And you also want your DPI ideally to be as close to 300 as you can, the further under 300 you go, the less dots per inch, and therefore the less detail there will be in the final print. I haven't tried printing anything super big just yet, but you can get away with a lower DPI on massive prints because the viewing distance will be further away. Like a billboard for example up close looks terrible, from, but from a distance it's fine. Hopefully that makes sense. Obviously the higher quality scan you get, the bigger you will be able to print with that scan. I got this roll of film scanned as TIFF files, so they're pretty big and work perfectly for prints. Anyway, the next step is sharpening, and on the previous prints, I just used the high pass filter with these settings that are on screen, and then slightly adjusted the opacity so things look a bit sharper than you would normally like them if you're just posting to Instagram, for example. 
For this one I used a high pass filter and also an on sharp mask which Kyle McDougall actually mentioned in one of his recent printing videos and it just adds an extra little bit of sharpness and he seemed to like the results he could get with it so I thought I'd give it a try for this print. I used the settings you can see on screen now for the on sharp mask and lowered the percentage to about 70 or so I believe it was. By the way this entire process that I'm sort of explaining to you here is definitely not the only way and it might not particularly be the best way but it's just the way that I've learned to do it and it's got me some pretty nice results so yeah. Then you need to proof your photo. This is where Photoshop will simulate how your photo will look on the paper that you've chosen to print on. For this you'll need to download the ICC profiles which should be available on the site you're using to print your image. I've already downloaded them so I can just click on view, proof setup, custom and then select the paper that I would like to use which for this print will be Hannah Mule photo rag. So many people seem to love it and I haven't tried it out so I thought I would give it a go for this photo. I take black point compensation and simulate paper ink as well. Now I can turn the proof on and off and see what happens with the colour and contrast of the photo. Obviously each paper will give a slightly different look with contrast varying a little bit and also the tint of the image. If you're happy enough with how it looks now you can skip this next part. For me when I switch to the proof view as you can see here it just removes a bit more of the contrast than I would ideally like so I added a levels adjustment and just slightly adjust it the darker parts of the image. Now that the proof looks closer to the original image it should hopefully give me a result that I'm happy with. And by the way it did, you'll see in a minute. Obviously the amount of adjustments you have to make here completely depends on the paper and just how close you want it to be to your original image. Before you finish you can also check the gamut warning feature and this will grey out any areas which Photoshop believes the paper will not be able to replicate. Normally this is really vibrant colours or really dark blacks so it's just letting you know that these areas may not look the same as you see them in Photoshop. So just another thing to keep in mind and again you can make adjustments to fix that. So let's just go ahead and flatten the image and then I'm going to add a border by going to image canvas size and I want a 2 inch border in mind so I'm just increasing the canvas size to 12 by 12 which will leave me with a 2 inch border the whole way around the image. I also changed the image to 8 bit as this is what the printers normally use and it's recommended to do so on the print site I use which is the print space by the way. I believe in most cases it's best to change the image to 8 bit before you save it and upload it to the print site. And finally I'm going to save the image as a TIFF file with no compression. And then you're good to go and upload your photo for print. I actually ordered a nice solid wood frame for this photo and I must say I do love how it looks. I should probably get it and show you even though it's probably on screen. Here it is. Uh, by the way I know there's probably a lot of you who made it extremely uncomfortable by watching me handling that print without the little cotton white gloves on. I was extremely careful with it. I was literally only trying to touch the back of the print as well as the, the uh, perspex here on this frame but I don't have a little pair of those gloves so I just had to deal with it but uh, it's all good. But yeah I do think the uh, light brown colour of this uh, solid wood frame just looks so nice with this photo and the matte white border as well just I, I think it just makes it pop. I do really love having a border um, on the prints because I think it just there's, there's just something about it I really like. It just gives the photo a little bit of room to breathe I think and just looks nice. I'm going to set it down because this is kind of stupid. The print itself by the way turned out really nice. Uh, I know this isn't the biggest print, it's 10 by 10, well the overall photo is 12 by 12 but the actual photo is 10 inches by 10 inches um, which I know isn't massive but it's a decent size and the photo looks really good, it's really sharp and I mean I can't really ask for much more, it's, it, 
it turned out great. It actually turned out a little bit more contrasty and colourful than I thought it might. I've seen a lot of other people talk about this particular paper, the Hannah Mule photo rag, and they say it works really nicely with like that pastel colour palette photo, which is why I chose it for this one. But it actually has a nice little bit of contrast to it and it kept the colours really nice. So yeah, I think it turned out great. The photo rag paper also has a nice bit of texture with it, which just adds something to the paper. It just it just feels like it has a bit of substance to it and um, I think it adds to the detail as well. By the way, I've used the Canson Burrito paper for the previous video on the 35mm photo and I love how it turned out as well. Um, so those will probably be my, my two papers going forward, I think, even though I haven't tried out many other ones, but super happy with how they turned out. I'm not really surprised at all that this photo looks great as a print and it would look great printed much bigger as well because there's just so much detail in those medium format scans. I knew as soon as I got the 35mm one back with how sharp it turned out that this one was gonna be great. And I'd love to print something massive at some point. I just don't know if I have the photo to do it, but it would be interesting to, to see how that turns out and how sharp it actually is if you print something really big. I honestly don't really have much more to say about it. I just wanted to show you it, show the process, show you how I prepare the photos for print and uh, it's just an enjoyable process printing your own art and it's probably going to be up on the wall for quite a while too which is kind of cool so if you haven't done it already i'd highly recommend it and also feel free to try out different papers and see what works best for the final outcome that you want to get anyway it's definitely enough talking for this one hopefully this was enjoyable and helpful in some way or other if it was make sure to give the video a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing and i'll see you in the next photo and i'll see you in the next video where hopefully I'll be out taking some photos. As we always say, take it easy, don't be a stranger.